the Final Four is set. UConn against Alabama. The Huskies playing in back-to-back -back Final Fours for the first time ever. The Tide playing in their first ever Final Four. In the other national semifinal, Purdue against tournament darling NC State. Boilermakers trying to go from one and done to one shining moment. The Wolfpack have won nine straight games to get here. Who's going to cut down the nets in Phoenix? Let's break it down. Back here with CBS Sports College Basketball Insider Gary Parrish. NC State earns a spot in the final four, the final spot in the final four. A sentence that I didn't think was going to be coming out of my mouth three weeks ago, Gary Parrish. Um, how the heck did NC State get here? This is March Madness, right? I always, it is. Uh, I find it difficult when I'm looking at a bracket to pick too many upsets because it's just counterintuitive. We've watched the sport for roughly four months. You know who's good and who's not. And typically the logical thing to do is to take the, the superior team to beat the inferior team. But it doesn't work so well in the men's NCAA tournament. And here we are again. The madness is here, just like always. It's just forever difficult to pinpoint where it's going to happen. I guess we could have all sat here a few weeks ago and said, maybe somebody like NC State could end up in the Final Four. But nobody would have said NC State. We'd have had a hard time wrapping our minds around any double-digit seed. But that's the nature of this event. It's been this way for as long as it's existed with this many teams. And I imagine it'll be similar to this as long as they don't mess with it, mess it up someday. Yeah, and they almost didn't even get here. Michael O'Connell had to hit a three, chuck it up at the buzzer, wild rattles in in the ACC tournament to force overtime against Virginia. I mean, th that kind of thing, it spurs you, right? When something like that happens, it's and here it is right here. And it's even more than just this shot because what happens just before this <laughs> is Isaac McNeely, for Virginia, who is an 85% free yep. throw shooter. Make your free throws. Is at the line with 5.3 seconds remaining. First of a one and one. Misses it. And then NC State goes down and banks that in. Also worth noting, Virginia had multiple fouls to give. They could have fouled him at any point. They just didn't. And if not for any of these things happening, that three-pointer getting banked in, or before that, like Isaac McNeely will be, be a character in this story forever. Because if he makes that free throw instead of misses that free throw. None of this other stuff is even possible. None of this other stuff can even happen. Uh, I you know, heard you talking to Danny Cannell earlier. Um, uh, he's obviously thrilled with his nephew there. Um, you, you, you just can't wrap your head around the idea that we have gone from that to this. Not only has NC State won nine straight games to get here, they've won eight straight games as underdogs. Yep. They were underdogs to Syracuse in the second round of the ACC tournament. They won that game. They've been underdogs every game since, and they've won every game since. Yep, and they're underdogs in the first national semifinal, 6.09 Eastern time against Purdue, who's won 48 games in the NCAA tournament, most of any team without a national title. DJ Burns and NC State, who've won nine in a row to get here, now got to deal with Zach Eady. They also got to deal with how he's officiated. So how are we measuring this? How are we game planning this to contain Eady and also consider the way he's officiated or lack thereof? I don't think you can contain him. I mean, we've been talking about this for two years. Like, what do you do with Zach Eady? And everybody's got a plan, and then it never works. Um, I will say that if I were Kevin Keats, I would spend this week talking a lot about the way he's officiated, just hoping that you can maybe get into at least one official's head because there is no doubt that um, he is operating with some advantages. Now, most of them are physical advantages. And I am not a big believer that he's only good because the refs allow him to operate in this way. That's nonsense. He's really good because he's a uniquely talented, extremely gifted college basketball player. Simple as that. But if you're looking for it, I mean, you can find where he's throwing elbows mm -hmm. to clear space and it, and it connects and there's no whistle. You, if you're looking for it, you can find where he quite literally stands in the lane, keeps yep. one foot in yep. for nine seconds. Yep. That's out there on X slash Twitter oh, going yeah. viral. So if I'm Kevin Keats, I do want to bring these things up. And any time somebody puts a microphone in front of me this week, I'm going to say things like, Obviously, Purdue is amazing. Zach Eady is the National Player of the Year. We're a heavy underdog for a reason. We get that. But as long as we get a fair whistle, as long as we get a fair shake, we've got a chance. Now, if we don't, then it's going to get over for us pretty quickly. But if we get a fair shot, if, if, he, if the fouls are called fouls, then maybe we can, you know, surprise some people one more time. Just keep setting that message out there. Maybe it'll connect with somebody.
We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. You got to keep putting it out there, right? That's hopefully that hopefully that works. And also, you got to consider that Kevin Keats. He likes to wear these shiny black sneakers, mm -hmm. which is what referees wear. Mm -hmm. So maybe he, you know, hey, look, look at my sneakers. <laughs> look, look at my sneakers. Can we get a little foul? He got called for a tech in that game against Duke. Yeah, to get here. To so keep, he's got to stay in that box. Keep those black sneakers in the coaching box. That was a questionable technical foul in that moment. I mean, it's not questionable in the sense that he was clearly outside of the box. Yep. If you want to call that, you can. But with eight minutes to go and an elite eight game, like all's well that ends well. But if NC State would have, say, lost by a point, buzzer beater, something like that, you, know, you and I'd probably be talking a lot about that technical foul call yep. right now. Could have been a game changer. Could, yeah. have been, could have been a turning point of the game. We could have had a turning point alert. Uh, he's living life and he, he's living right because uh, them winning the ACC tournament triggered a contract extension. So he's good to go. But now you got to figure out how to beat Zach Eady. And, and we laid it out. Now, again, they're an, an underdog once again here in a tournament game. Nine and a half is the spread. Uh, Purdue nearly a double digit favorite. How can you bet against the Wolfpack right now? Like, if they, if the, can they keep it close, really? Because maybe you, you, you like Purdue to win the game, but NC State to keep it close, how do you bet against a team that's won nine games in a row? If you just believe in the team on the other side, yep. as being truly special and nothing fluky about their appearance in this Final Four. I know folks out there who get so caught up on the way last season ended had looked at this Purdue team and maybe some of, some of Matt Painter's NCAA tournament history and said, I just don't believe that that guy or that team can actually get where everybody else thinks they're going to go, which is the Final Four, perhaps all the way uh, to being a national champion. But the truth is, even with those skeptics existing, if you just looked at this and recognized it wasn't uh, shocking that Purdue was eliminated early from the tournament last season, although any time a 1 versus 16 thing happens, that is completely shocking. But uh, Purdue being a one seed and an outright Big Ten champion last season with two freshman guards, neither one of whom was a McDonald's All-American or super heralded, that was actually the thing to focus on. Mm -hmm. How did they do that? Not how did they then lose in a single elimination tournament. How did they win all that stuff before they got to the single elimination tournament with freshman guards? Well, now those freshman guards are sophomore guards, and Braden Smith is one of the best in the country. They added Lance Jones, from the, uh, and, and they get more athletic. They add shooting. They're just a much better basketball team, and I think they're respectfully a much better basketball team than NC State. I think NC State's best moments, they have now officially happened. Now, I might have been wrong saying this like nine previous times if I would have said it nine previous times, but I think one of the interesting things we're going to have in this Final Four now is that if you were hoping, what has, at least in the minds of humans, for the most part this season, been the best two teams in the country, UConn and Purdue, mm -hmm. we are now more likely to see that on a Monday night in Arizona than we have quite literally ever been because now they're both just one more win away from it and they're both heavy favorites in the national semifinals. That would be a heck of a matchup. Purdue trying to go from one and done to one shining moment. UConn trying to run it back. They've only trailed for 28 seconds this tournament. Alabama has trailed in every game they've played. The Huskies point differential is plus 111 through four games. For context, their point differential last year going in the final four was plus 90. Gary, aside from a prayer, what has to happen for Alabama to pull off the improbable? They have to shoot incredibly well from three-point range. Now, we know they're going to shoot a lot from three-point range. It is what they do. Um, they are not very good defensively, or at least they haven't been throughout much of this season, so much so that Nate Oates, their head coach, even called them out at one point. They more or less said, hey, if you guys didn't know, now the secret is out. We don't guard anybody. Now, they've been better, but they're still not elite so the only way they're going to have a shot here and it's like only way they have a shot is to shoot incredibly well from the perimeter and that is what kind of makes this scary for UConn although I think UConn has probably reached a level where they're not scared of anything they're killing everybody but the thing you know about Alabama when you go into this is that almost regardless of what you do now you can do some things but regardless of what you do on defense they're going to get these threes up and they're going to try to take you know around 30. Sometimes they get a little less, sometimes they get a little more, but the target number is going to be right around 30. And if they make 12, 13, 14, and it might take 13, 14, 15 to be able to keep up with this UConn team. But that's the scary thing about Alabama. You know they're going to take them, and if they are making them, you might find yourself in a fight you otherwise should not have been in and would not have been in. Now, the flip side of this is if Alabama doesn't shoot it well from the perimeter, I mean, they might lose by 30. Yep. It could get really, really bad. Yep. But that three-point shot, the consistency with which they hunt those shots and take those shots, if they make them at a high level, then that's the recipe for success. 
but I, I wouldn't count on it. I do think that for um, the type of championship game we could have on Monday, the semifinals could could get a little lopsided. At least that's what the point spreads suggest. Yep, in, in, indeed they do. And uh, well, UConn ha has been an absolute juggernaut. Uh, bulletproof is what Dan Hurley said. UConn is an 11 and a half point favorite. They've won 10 straight tournament games by at least 13 points. UConn trying to become the first team to win back to back national championships in Florida in 2006 and 2007. Gary, are we about to witness something we haven't seen in some 17 years? UConn winning back to back national titles? Yep. Perhaps. It, it, they're the favorites. I mean, they're listed at minus 190, I believe, right now to cut nets on that Monday night in Arizona. I have been on Purdue since mm -hmm. the beginning of the season. It would be foolish to back off of them now. Like, I'm only two wins away from looking like a genius. I'm not going to hit yep. reverse You're right already now. a genius. I'm not going to yes. hit reverse now. But I'm very aware of what UConn is doing. They've been up 30 points in every NCAA tournament game. They've never lost on a neutral court this season. They've never lost at home this season. Um, they're incredibly off, incredible offensively. They're incredible defensively. I get it. I'll continue to ride with Purdue until the final buzzer sounds, but I'm through arguing with folks about this. I understand what UConn is. I'm seeing the same things everybody else is. I understand why they're the favorite. Well, I'm sticking with UConn because that was my pick from the get-go as well. Well, you <laughs> might end up being more of a genius than me. Well, I mean, I don't know about a genius. They're the best. <laughs> they're the best team in college basketball all season. But what a matchup that would be if we got UConn against Purdue, Donovan Klingon against Zach Eady, Kling Kong against the big boiler maker. Oh, that'd be awesome. And it's all going to be going down in Phoenix Saturday night. Gary Parrish here with us on CBS Sports HQ. We will see you, my friend, in Phoenix. Final Four coverage begins on Thursday from Glendale, Arizona, the site of the Final Four and the National Championship. Who's going to cut down the nets in Phoenix? We'll be there to cover it all for you right here on CBS Sports HQ. Coming up, the Wolfpack walk into the podium after walk into the Final Four. Nine straight wins. Say what? NC State. We'll see you in Phoenix.